Hey guys, it's Linda Winter. I've got another Winter Designs template. This one is my round table placemat. This, of course, has that no slip material. Sometimes it's brown, sometimes it's gray. Either way, no slipping, no kidding. You're going to see me cutting this fabric in a little bit, but I want to talk about why this shape, why it's wider here and narrower at the top. When you buy placemats, I went through my drawer and I grabbed some of my old ones. This is a placemat. It's a little bit stiff on the backside, satiny, you know, for Christmas. Here's another one. This guy here has that satiny, or actually just kind of a, a, a broadcloth kind of a fabric on the back side. Here's another one too. This guy is the only one that will fit for what I'm going to be talking about, round tables. If you have a round table and you have one of these, one of these, one of these, one of these, I've got pictures on my website so you can go look at it. But if you have four placemats on, on a round table, they're going to be overlapping a little bit for most round tables. So I had suggestions from many people make a placemat for a round table. Now I had never had a round table for dinner that we ate off of so I didn't get it. But once they explained it to me it was like oh I get it. So having this this way and having one two three four these guys are going to be able to sit and have room for your plate and have room for whatever you have in the center too and not overlap because they're narrower at the top than they are at the bottom. All right, so I mentioned the one that is the only one that would work. It's because it's a small one, but look, with my regular dinner plate, I've hardly got any room over here for my silverware and then the all important spills because with the placemat, I wanna have room for this to handle not only my silverware, but also the little dribbles and the drips off of the plate. And you can see how this is the perfect size for it. So round table placemat. We're gonna talk about placemats. I'm gonna talk about fabric choices. I'm gonna talk about some of the interfacings or battings or whatever it is you wanna use. And then I'm gonna show you a couple projects that somebody else did because it's not just for placemats. There are other things, just like everything else that I make, it's made to do one or maybe a couple things, but then there's a bunch of other things to do too. So reversible, I want you to think about your fabrics and choose fabrics that coordinate, but they don't necessarily have to, like these two do. These you can see would be perfect at any time of the year, but especially, you know, at harvest time, in the spring, in the summertime, whatever. I love having text on fabric, so that's a great choice. I want you to notice the top stitching right here. You can see how that just gives it a really nice look, and I think that's a great job. Top stitching, edge stitching, really, and then top stitching right right along here. I think it just dresses that up a little bit. So that's one style of fabric there. We're going to talk about this with the tea towel in a few minutes because I love using tea towels. Quilt as you go, if you're doing any piecing, if you have any quilt blocks, that's of course a great time for you to do placemats. Scrappy projects, all of those things that you have sitting around, grab those out. I could also add applique on top of here and have a really good time with that. I want you to also see this. It's kind of stiff. This is a little bit heavier than this is. What we're gonna put inside makes a difference too. And honestly, there's not a wrong way to do a placemat. It's whatever works for you, as long as you're happy with what it is. This, I don't know if you can tell, but this is much heavier. So I'm gonna talk about what I put inside of here. But this is a tea towel and that's a tea towel. So I'm gonna put that over there because we'll take a look at that too. And then this is another top stitching with, instead of a straight stitch, a decorative stitch. If you have a sewing machine that does those decorative stitches, this is a great time to play with those. And again, reversible. This is Christmas, Christmas, but I want, what I want you to think about is Christmas and New Year's, New Year's and Easter, Easter and Valentine's Day. They don't have to go together, but think about doing a two for, a two for one. And here's a set of four that I love, that these, they're again, reversible, so I could have every other, every other. So have it like this, have it like this and have it like this. And again, you'll see pictures on the website that'll show on a table. And it, 
you know, it just gives you an idea of how that's going to fit. And if you look here, again, a little bit of body to this, but not a whole lot of stiffness. So let's talk about fabrics. Let's talk about options for you to be able to see what it is that you can do. Cotton fabrics, you've got a thousand choices, maybe a million choices of fabrics in your stash. It's whatever you have in your stash. Very rarely do I talk about fabrics for men because I don't have a lot of fabrics for men. So my friend Beth gave me some men fabrics and I think this would be really great to do placemats, not just for Father's Day, but for the men in your life in general. If you are a gardener or you're giving somebody some things that you've canned, you know, a fabric like this would be really cute. If you have somebody that loves gnomes, you know, terrific. If you have somebody that loves to gamble, there's fabric out there for sports and gambling and football and baseball and tractors and all kinds of things. Again, more men fabric. People that love to go to the mountains or to the lake or to the beach or to wherever it is, people that vacation in an RV, think about all of those things. So those fabrics that you have, this is a good time to put them together for your stash. It's not a huge template, so a fat quarter or less, it's a little bit less than a fat quarter, times two. You need one for the front, one for the back. And again, if you've got kids too, think about kid fabrics. And again, another men's fabric too. So lots of choices. All right, I talked about the tea towel. I love tea towels because they have designs on them, but you can already see a little less, a little less over here. I don't have enough fabric. What you do have is you've got a little bit of an edge, a little bit of an edge all the way around. I've got a surgical seam ripper that I love, but some of you may not be as confident as I am with this just kind of ripping as you go. So you can, if you're comfortable with that, you can do that. The other thing I really like to do is to grab some tweezers. And the tweezers that I have on the website, I've got three different styles of tweezers. You can not only grab underneath, but you can also grab, and it's always easier at the top, to grab a stitch, grab a stitch, grab a stitch. So when you grab the stitch, we want to look, and I've got white on white. We want to make sure that we're just grabbing the stitch and not... You can see right there, can you see how I'm grabbing the towel? We don't wanna grab the towel. So you wanna grab a stitch, grab a stitch, grab a stitch. And when you grab those stitches, when you go to grab, we're basically going to pull a little bit and I'm just gonna to start to pull. And we're gonna pull. And you can see if I kept gathering that, that that would start to take that apart. And what that's going to give me when I open that up, do you see from here, that's where the stitch was, all of that excess. With the tea towel and then opening them up, most of the time it will give you just to the edge of the template. So you can take those cute tea towels, tea towels that you can find all over and you can do things like this. If you look at this, you can see basically my seam allowance that's built into their turning. And I did a heavier weight on here, so we'll look at the interfacing. I love having this that doesn't give you a, I mean, it's kind of Valentine's, but it's also, hey, I'm just, you know, showing my love love and my affection for whoever it is that's at the dining room table with me. But you can also do it for Valentine's Day or for birthday or for whatever it is. This is a tea towel. Here's another tea towel. A little bit lighter weight and then I've used cotton fabric on the back. So tea towels to me are really great real estate option for you. Let's talk about what you're going to put inside of here. You can of course use whatever kind of batting. So I'm going to flip this over and I want you to see this is kind of dirty. I'm not going to have that where anybody's going to be seeing it, but it's inside. So nobody's going to be seeing this. As long as it's just something that's kind of stained this, and this is actually just lighter weight. I don't know if you can see, but this is a cheaper batting. So it's not even that it's stained, it's just lighter weight. It's not as consistent. But this is a really good time to use some of those battings that may not look as nice. You check out the smell, and that's a different story. If it doesn't smell nice, if it's got something dirty on there, then we're not gonna use it. But batting is a nice option as well. You can do SF-101, that's what I have on the back of this SF-101. That's what this is, I've fused that on. And then on the other side of a tea towel, that's a tea towel, 
I used my lightweight fleece. The lightweight fleece from Pellon, I love for placemats. These two together, believe it or not, that gave me a lot of thickness there. So it, it's enough, and this is stiff, enough stiffness that it really doesn't flop around. And I like that for a placemat. But again, you can do whatever it is that you like. This is a little bit heavier weight than this is, so you can see another fusible fleece. Now we're getting into something much heavier. This is kind of a felt-ish material. This is not fusible, but you can use this as a backing. Do you want this to be subtle, or do you want it to have substance, or do you want it to have stiffness, or do you want it to have a nice springy loft? This is a heavier weight fleece that's fusible again, and this right here, you can see that's going to give a whole lot of substance to that placemat. And I love doing things like this. This is my insole film. Insole film is great for putting inside when you want to make a hot pad, when you want to have something in the middle of your table, when you want it to be at the buffet and you want to put all of those hot items on your table so that it reflects the heat up. Place this side up. You're still going to need some batting on the back side. These layers here in the middle of a placemat, now that turns it into a hot pad. So I think that's a great option. The other thing you can do too is this. This is one of my favorite materials. It's hard to find. This is for your iron top. They call it iron quick. But this material on the back would also be a hot plate. What this tells people when they see this is this isn't a placemat. This is for your hot items to protect your table. So if you put that on the back, it's a twofer. It gives you the back and it also gives you your inside. You can add batting. You can add a fusible. You can add something in there as well if you wanted to do that. Just be aware of how much you're working with as far as the loft to be stitching through all of those layers. So all of these are options for you. Another thing too, I mentioned tea towels that have the designs on them, but you can also get napkins. If you inherited a lot of napkins or you find a lot of napkins wherever, then napkins are really great too. This is boring. What are we going to do with it? You've got a Cricut machine. You've got a Silhouette machine. Go ahead and do names, monograms, initials. If you're doing a wedding set, putting that onto a nice linen napkin is really great, but turn them into placemats. And you can see this is a really big napkin. Again, we're looking at the size of this. So not all napkins are huge like the one I just had, but think about this is how much I need. And remember that we talk about writing on the templates. Up here it says top, depending on how long you've had my template, this has round table, placemat, upside down. When this was cut, the guys that cut it thought this was the direction, so they have it here. That's why I've gone in and written top. This is the top. Why does that matter? When you're working with a fabric that's directional, when you're working with a tea towel that's directional. I don't want to have this little guy going this way because that doesn't fit I mean, it would fit on a regular table, but on a round table, that's not going to work for you. They're not going to sit nested nicely. So if you do have one of the older placemats that was written upside down, and by older, I mean a couple months ago even, go ahead and write top. On most of these, I have written top for you, so that should give you that. If you want to also do the measurements on here from edge to edge so that you know how wide your fabric is from top to bottom, how wide your fabric needs to be, then those metallic markers are great. I like the white, there's a silver, there's a gold, and there's a rose. I mentioned that I wanted to show you a few other projects before we get started on some things that other people have done. This is from my friend Jessica. Jessica Page, she like Beth and like Darla, a lot of the customers that I have that have become friends, they think outside the box. They're not looking at this as a placemat. They're looking at this as many other things. This is one of those cute little totes where you've got just the cording inside. You can use rope, you can use fabric, whatever it is. She's boxed the bottom, but she used the round table placemat. So this up here at the top. I'm not sure how she cut it out, but you can use any of the rounded uh, templates that I have. One of my microwave bowls, the smaller ones would fit right inside of there, but you can use a plate. You can use whatever it is that you have. She also has a bunch of kids and her kids love to craft with her. So she made aprons. Here's an adult and then we have kids. And she said her kids just love wearing these aprons, especially when you add zippers and pockets. Look how cute they are. And again, you can play with the fabric choice 
choices for kids, but this is the perfect size to make a placemat. And it's a perfect size to make aprons for adults and for kids. See how much longer it is for those kids? So when they're sitting down, you don't have to worry about them making a mess all over everything. And this was one that I thought was really cool. Tula Pink, when she came out with the homemade line, this is one that Jessica wanted to have to carry some of her tools. This is that pressing and cutting mat, flip side, one side is pressing and one side is cutting. It's 12 inches by 12 inches. This will hold that inside of there. Has all the threads, has some of her other tools in there. And then she added basically kind of a gusset for the side and a zipper at the top. This is not a beginner, you know, if you've never sewn before kind of project. But for, for those of you that are really comfortable, this is just something to kind of get you inspired, to get you thinking, what else can I do with this? All right, so let's take a look at the one that we're going to make. And I want to show you how we're going to fussy cut our fabric because there's no fussy cut frame for this. And there won't be a fussy cut frame for it because it's so big. If you want it, I can make it for you, but it's not something I'm going to offer on the website because it would be fairly expensive. I've gone ahead and I've cut my one side. Why? Because when I use this template, I want these cheetahs to be laid out exactly. If you're fussy cutting your fabric, you want to cut one at a time. If I had polka dots and polka dots, imagine that I had rectangles here and I had my batting at the same time, I would stack all three layers and I'd place this template on top and I'd cut all of those layers at the same time. But I wanted to show you how to fussy cut a cheetah. And you notice these fabrics don't really match perfectly, that's okay. Because when they're sitting like this, you're only seeing this. When they're sitting like this, you're only seeing this. So it doesn't have to match exactly. What I want you to do, instead of looking at the front like this, we're gonna place this down. I'm gonna place this here and I'm going to turn this over. And I wanna be able to look and see here, I don't have a lot of fabric and I don't have a lot of fabric. So I'm gonna hold this right here and I'm gonna hold as I flip that in place. And now I can see this doesn't really give me what it is I want. So I'm gonna move this over. This fabric right there, I can see, I want this guy here, I want this guy here. Let's get this out of the way so you can see it. And do you see how I'm kind of folding that over and I'm folding that over and I'm holding that down and now look. I'm gonna turn this on the back side so you can see it a little bit better. I think it'll be easier to see that. And also this no slip material is kind of holding that in place. Do you see that spot right there? If I want all of this in there, then I'm gonna be basically looking right at that. So that little area there, hard to tell, but there's a little bit of fabric right there. There's a little bit of fabric right there. But what it does tell me though, is that I kind of like the look of what I have right there. So this I'm gonna put right at the edge and where I've got this folded over here, I'm basically gonna flip this down. And I'm gonna place this on top. And I did a little bit of a crease there. I'm gonna put this on the edge there. And I'm basically fussy cutting without having to have a fussy cut frame. So it allows me to see what it is that I want. I can also still play with all of this and figure out what it is, but instead, cut yourself a bigger piece. I cut a smaller piece. Cut yourself a bigger piece so you can play around. I'm one that doesn't want to waste any fabric at all, so I'm always going to cut a little bit smaller than I think I really need. We're going to cut with that no slip material that allows me to grab. And again, if I were doing polka dots, if I were doing something that didn't have a direction, didn't have a pattern that I needed to worry about, then I would be cutting all of my layers at the same time. I'm going to show you why I'm not cutting my batting in a minute and also why I don't have anything on the back of this. Let's take a look at this fabric. And when I flip this over, this is a home deck fabric. And do you see, I've got my cheetah, I've got my cheetah, I've got my cheetah eyes up here. He's gonna lose his eyes probably in that seam allowance when I turn this. Home deck fabric. This is pretty substantial. This is a home deck fabric as well. And I've ironed on an SF-101. I'm gonna go ahead and give it a little bit of a press. When I ironed this, I didn't have my Teflon sheet over at my other ironing table. I had it here. So I didn't iron right along the edges. So we're gonna iron that down just a bit. Ironing versus pressing. I love having this Teflon sheet. And the other thing that I will tell you when I made the ones with the tea towels, those tea towel creases, they're in there and they are in there really, really good. So I wanna show you a little trick and you may know it already, but it was one of those happy accidents. When I'm going to press, I talk about this sheet and a bigger sheet. I've got a 
16 by 24, I think, and a 12 by 16. I love the big one the best because it's just so versatile. But I want you to think about the tea towel with the creases right in here. When you've got those creases, if I have this down and I'm pressing on those creases, I'm pressing on the top. I can fold this over and now it's going to give me extra heat with this and extra heat up. It's amazing. I'm not going to touch this because it's super hot. I can feel how hot it is. It's amazing how this Teflon sheet holds inside of here that excess heat. And it really will help you. If I had that press, that crease that was there for the tea towel, as I'm doing this, I'm just going to let it sit there. You can put a clapper on top of that that will really get that heat down in there. That clapper that's made out of wood. When you press down, that wood is going to kind of come up a little bit. The heat's going to come up in the wood a little bit. And that's just going to hold everything down. And it'll really help you get those creases out. So that's one of those things that's just kind of, a, again, a happy accident. All right. So if we were going to do a batting layer with all of these, and you notice what I've got here, I have two layers of batting. We're going to put all of these together. And if you want to do a batting layer, you can see I have not cut around. All right, can you see how I haven't cut around? Because basically I can use this right here as like a coloring book. So do I want that amount or do I want this amount? You decide how much. You can tell by the weight of this how much you want. I've already got this SF-101. I've already got home deck. This was a towel too. It was actually a napkin. So there's a little bit of weight to that as well. So you decide how much it is that you want. I want to make sure all of these are lined up. And I was wondering why that didn't line up. It was folded underneath. Now battings like this piece of batting that I have that's been beat up and thrown around. It was just a remnant basically. It's going to have a little bit of a ripple on there. So that ripple a little bit is going to move on me. So I'm going to use pins for this instead. And home deck fabrics also, these two have a little bit of a um, water resistant. They're the ones that are for outside. So they're going to be slipping around on each other. So when you're working on this the first time, if you're new to sewing, don't use two home deck or two fabrics, napkins. They have something on there. It's a chemical that just keeps them from getting stains. I don't know if you saw on my placemats that I had, there were stains on there. So those stains on fabrics that are being treated, those stains, you can dab them off pretty quickly if you get to them right away. Home deck fabrics and fabrics that are treating with chemicals, they're going to be sliding around on those two layers. So if you, again, are new to sewing, then cotton, cotton. You can use any of the fusibles, FFs 101. You can use the lightweight fusible fleece. All of those are really going to help everything kind of stay together, too. All right, where are we going to have our opening? I like to have the opening at the top here rather than at the bottom. The bottom is where you're looking at when you are eating. So I'm going to put a pin here and I'm going to put a pin here. If you need to know where that opening is and need a reminder of don't sew, then you can put a pin this way. I'm going to basically start right here and stitch around. Now, do you see how close I am to the edge here? How little bit I have left over. I could take the time and move that up a little bit. I'm not going to worry about it because I'm going to use about a quarter inch seam allowance and all of this kind of comes out in the wash with this. All right, so I've got white thread on here so you can see what it is that I'm doing. Of course, I'd really use a black thread. A black thread is going to help out. You could do black when we go to top stitching and you could do, trying to pull that back for you, you could do a cream on the brown or uh, on the back side or brown for your bobbin later on when we go to top stitching too. Totally up to you. And uh, stitch length of 2.4, 2.5, whatever it is you like to do for most of your sewing, that works just fine. If you had squared off, again, if we had polka dot, polka dot, batting, you'd cut all the, those three layers together and then you would have all these layers lined up. I'm using my placemat again as kind of a coloring book just to follow along the edges. And I'm not worrying about that batting so much on the back side. I used a remnant, so it is puckering a little bit and it is rippling a little bit. 
And again, if I wanted to do free motion quilting on top of here, any kind of decorative, that would be something you could do too. The other thing you can do too is if you have a long arm, and those of you that do have a long arm, I'm sure you've done a ton of these, you could take those quilted pieces that you've been practicing, all of those pieces, if you've got a long arm that is computerized and you've done some practice stitches, you can cut the placemat out and then put a binding on it afterwards to finish that off. All right, we're coming around to my top. And I'm gonna look right here and I see my seam allowance, my seam allowance, and I'm just gonna stitch a little bit and back stitch there. All right, I'm gonna use pinking shears if I can find my pinking shears and I'm gonna trim around some of this excess. The other thing you could do is place the template right on top of here and cut off all that excess batting too. You don't really need to do a lot of trimming of this. Again, if you had cut all of the layers together at the same time, you wouldn't have to trim a whole lot except where those curves are. I'm just gonna cut some of that excess off because I'm not gonna pink all of this. I would really, if I were taking the time to make these for real, I would go ahead and use my template and put that right back on top of here and just cut off that excess. And I think what I'm gonna do, just as I keep doing right now, I'm just gonna cut along and trim off some of that bulk. My rotary cutter will work just fine for the majority of this. If you did a narrower seam allowance, then you wouldn't have a whole lot of trimming to do at all. So totally up to you. All right, so I've cut off some of that bulk. All I'm gonna do is take my pinking shears and go right along the curves. You know, there's a thousand ways, again, to do this. It's whatever works for you, whatever method works for you, and the look that you're going after. That's the main thing, is the look that you're going after. And once you make a couple of these, then you'll determine what interfacing, what fabrics you like, the look that you like, if you want them quilted, if you wanna do quilt blocks, if you like crazy quilting. I love crazy quilting, but I realize the time it takes for me to do crazy quilting is a lot longer than I have time for these days. I'm looking right here, I trimmed pretty close. If I were really doing this, I'd go back and I'd stitch a little bit closer inside of there. I'm gonna go ahead and just turn. And it is home deck, so it's gonna feel a little stiffer than your cotton fabrics that you use. Quilting cotton fabric gives you a whole different feel, a whole different look when it comes to placemats. You've gotta decide, am I gonna throw these in the washer and dryer a lot every time somebody spills? or do I wanna be able to wipe off? That's the beauty of some of these outdoor, I should call it outdoor fabric rather than home deck. Outdoor fabrics that have been treated, they're able to be wiped off a little bit more for placemats, laminated fabric, oil cloth, you can do that as well. So you decide, are you making these placemats for people that are really messy? <laughs> <laughs> where you're gonna be doing a lot of washing otherwise, you know, then home deck fabrics would work really, really well for that. I'm gonna put this down. Now, all of these, because I have that batting inside and I have the SF-101 on the one side and then I have the home deck, they're gonna to want to kind of pucker up and not lay flat. So as I press, I'm just gonna kind of open this up. Of course, we would take our time and we would press a little bit nicer and a little bit slower than what I'm gonna be doing here, but I wanna give you the idea of this. And by the way, what I'm doing here can be out of whatever shape. I just happen to have the round table placemat that has been really popular, more popular than I ever realized. So I guess a lot of you have those smaller round tables in the condos, in your rentals. You know, if you're getting together with a bunch of friends for Christmas and you wanna make some placemats or you're getting together for a girl's weekend and you know that the condo where you have, you've seen pictures online, the um, Airbnb has a round table, make some placemats. Do your Cricut or your silhouette and do that um, nice little monogram or cute saying or whatever it is that you think would be really kind of appropriate. 
and fun. And y'all see that I almost burned my fingers. So you do whatever works for you, the fabric choices, all of those things that you're doing. And if you notice too, I've got a light fabric and I've got a dark fabric. And I want on the dark not to be seeing the light. But it does remind me to talk about piping. And earlier when I was sewing, I'm not sure if you're able to hear, but I talked about if you have a long arm and you have all of those quilt pieces that you've been trying out different designs on, and it's just fabric and batting and fabric, then those would be great right there to take to your cutting table and cut them out. And when you cut them out, you can put a binding around. That binding around is gonna be done really fast and easy because there's not a lot of curves on here, but you can take your time and do those. The other thing too, is if you wanna dress this up a little bit, piping does a beautiful job. Linda McGee, my friend, G-E-E-S, G -H -E -E -S, she has a piping wizard. And that piping wizard is a really fast, easy way for you to cut your own piping. If you have it, then you know how good it is. And if you have it, you probably used it and you probably added piping to your projects. And piping just dresses things up and really gives it a nice kind of an elegant look. Elegance here, and I think a little bit of fun here too. So we've got a little bit both on both sides. All right, so inside here, you can, with a lot of your cotton fabrics, just pull and it will tend to kind of lay out flat. I've got batting inside of here, so I'm gonna press this one side, and then we'll go over and flip over on the other side and see how that other side looks. Again, if you have a clapper, this would be a good time to put that clapper right on top of it. Let's see how the other side looks. Not bad, I wanna tuck that in a little bit. If you feel like you wanna trim off some of that bulk of the batting, you could do that beforehand, or you could do that right now if it's fighting with you. We have a placemat. And now we're gonna to be top stitching. I've got white thread. I don't wanna to top stitch with white thread. I just think it's gonna not give me the look that I want. If you are gonna do a decorative thread, if you are going to do a contrasting thread, a heavier weight thread looks really nice and a longer stitch looks really nice. Also a double needle. Double needle top stitching does a beautiful job. With the white thread, I really thought I was gonna do white. I'm not crazy about doing the white along there. So I would pull out my black thread. I would start, this is where the opening is. I would start stitching right about here or you could stitch right about here and stitch all the way around and edge stitch. I'm gonna pull back over here and you can see the white thread you can see the white thread, and I think probably the best thing to do if you're not confident, a decorative stitch. It just gives you a nicer, easier look, and you don't have to be so perfect on all of that. But that is the round table placemat. I hope this is something that if you've got, that you've already played with and you've worked on this, placemats or placemats. You know, again, there's a thousand ways to make these. This is just one way to do it. I want you to see how this has got a little bit of stability, but it's not so stiff. But this is, again, a water resistant material, water resistant material, so I can kind of wipe that off. Outdoor home deck fabrics. I love those for these kinds of projects. But this is a round table placemat. You have lots of other options with these. I can't wait to see what you do with this. I also have written directions on my website. You can find those at winterdesigns.com. So head over to Winter Designs. Let's look at the directions tab. The directions tab right there, this is something new that I haven't talked much about. I don't do a lot of written directions because the videos are so thorough. But if you look on the left-hand side, you can see circles and baby bib and the box bags, all kinds of things there. So I have written directs for you, directions for you. I'll continue to add to these, but the directions are going to supplement this video because it's so much easier for me to show you but the directions are nice for you to print out and say oh yeah I remember when she talked about that I remember when she sh showed us that if you're interested in this you can get it on my website winterdesigns.com under the products and templates and it's called a round table placemat I have a couple hundred videos for you on YouTube as well so you can go look for all of these things directions projects everything I have and it will all be written down below and you can see by searching for round table that there is that round table place 
placemat. I've got vinyl tablecloths. If you haven't played with those and you're making things for kids, the vinyl tablecloths that I have are really good. Round, um, my round offs are kind of a fun one as well. If you wanted to do placemats but do curves, you can make your own as well. So this template's super fast, super easy, super quick. Have fun with your fabrics. Grab all of those pieces that you have, the scraps that you have, your fat quarters. Use all of the interfacings that you have left over from your quilts, from your other projects, because nobody's gonna know what's inside. Just think about how it's gonna handle in the wash and how it's gonna handle under the iron because I don't want you to have to be pressing a whole lot all the time to make your table look nice, but have fun with this. Thanks so much for watching.